Right, hello my friends, yes, back with another Sengoku Batara video because, you know, I'm milking this series for all it is worth at the moment until they release a Sengoku Batara 5, which is what I would like to talk about today. So, um, this video is going to be what I would like to see in Sengoku Batara 5, changes to the series and uh, some returning things. So we'll start off with, like, characters, uh, mainly returning characters. I'm not actually sure who I would have for, like, new characters because Sengoku Batara is a series in which they add basically anybody and they just come out with the most wacky design and to be honest i don't really care who they add but i would like to see some older characters returning obviously i would like to see the ones they added in the mobile game so that is um Kiyomasa and kutsume something other hime which is actually just ina from uh samurai warriors or tadagatsu's daughter as it were. So I'd like them to get full, you know, movesets because she's got like a spear. I think it's similar to Tadagatsu's actual weapon. And I don't know what Kiyomasa has, but whatever. I'd like to see them get, you know, full release versions. Uh, maybe Okuni as well. I think she'd be quite an interesting character. But returning characters I'd like to see would mainly just be Ikuts Itsuki. Sorry, I always call her Ikutsuki because of, you know, Persona 3. But Itsuki is a character I'd like to see return. Um, she's quite an interesting one should add another character to the roster of characters with the ice element. She had quite an interesting playstyle as well. She had hammer, she had enough moves to like warrant having super moves in to begin with. She has that attack where she like sort of jumps back and summons the giant uh, snowmen from the sky. Um, she had quite a cool interesting personal style as well or personal inscription in which she would actually forget to bring her weapon. She had a move set where she would attack with just her hands which is ridiculously powerful um because it was able to like stun lock anybody so i'd like to see her return and uh, it gives a person for last to be like heroes conquest mode somebody in the top uh right of the map as well just above masamune instead of having like you know generic clown person there or you know the undead guy so i'd like to see her return I'd also like old versions of like Ieyasu and Oichi to return with their alternate weapons. Just give people like more options to play as different characters. The old Oichi moveset is actually pretty decent as well, which I, I quite like. Um, and in terms of like story narrative, it doesn't actually make any difference if you do have those characters in because, you know, they're just somebody to play. It doesn't necessarily change the character at all. So... That'd be quite a cool, cool thing. Um, another thing would be to reintroduce like Musashi and whatever his name, Honganji. Um, actually give them like full move sets. Musashi is quite an interesting character because he's been like a semi super boss in some of the games. So he reappears in for Sumeragi as a Tenka Medal uh, punishment. So he comes in, he does his move where he like throws the stones at you. Um, he can one or two sh hit you. And kill you so he's pretty strong i like to see him just return as like a playable character as well as like sort of a bonus thing don't make don't give him like a story mode or anything just give him like uh just make him playable in like free mode and extra modes so i think that'd be pretty cool just expand his moveset as well give him actual like proper proper moveset instead of just two attacks um honganji as well i think he's an interesting character because uh, obviously he's like a post to Nobunaga throughout the whole thing. He leads like a religious cult um, Like Xavi except like not um, they're more about like money in this place and um, Yeah, I just think it'd be an interesting character to have returned give him a full moveset as well He only had like two Different skills that he could use which was kind of lame. He was he's fairly strong as well and his uh Stages in Sengo Capacitor 2 was all about money and he basically bribes your cac your allied forces to fight against you. Um, he heals himself. He, it'd be quite an interesting character to re-add. Um, so I do actually have one idea for a new character. Well, not really a new character, but it, well, you'll see what I see see what I mean when I say it. So um, the Mayoshi Trio as one character. So they are three characters, which uh, two of them wield spears and the other one wields a sword. They are unique NPCs that appear in Hisahide stages and any, well, various other stages throughout the series. 
Um, I think it'd be an interesting concept to try and have three characters all attacking at once. They could do that thing where they like stand on each other's shoulders and attack. Um, your super moves could be like utilizing one of them and doing a super move while the other two go and do something else. Um, yeah, I just think it'd be like a really interesting concept of them using each other as weapons. Uh, one character, well, three characters as one entity. It'd be pretty cool, I think. Obviously, they've done that with Senoryukyo, or whatever his name is. So they've had like two people as one character there. Um, admittedly, not very well because he's just like a schizophrenic. But I think it'd be a very interesting thing to do. And obviously, they've done it as well with Yamanasuke. Shonosuke or whatever his name is. I can't even pronounce his name. The guy who has the deer as his character and uh, wears the deer armor. So they've had like different interpretations of like having two characters in one thing. So I just think it'd be quite an interesting thing to have. And I think their design is pretty cool as well. So yeah, give them a reason to actually keep them in the series instead of just like, oh, are they in? Are they out? Are they in? Are they out? Whatever. So new systems. So I would retain the combat, obviously. Uh, the combat in Sengoku Basra is like the defining feature. It is absolutely leagues above anything Koei have ever done and probably will ever do. Um, so obviously they have the inputs of, you know, square is your weak attack, triangle, directional triangle, hold square, R1, L1, you know, L1 triangle, L1 square, all this and that. Uh, you have the switchable super moves. So the one thing I would actually change from it would be obviously have like maybe an extra input on, you know, the blocking attack. So you could do like block um, uh, circle or block, block and R1 or something. And then you have like an extra string of moves there. I'm not sure if that's like a good idea or not, but the one thing I would change it would be to be able to swap the moves out in exchange for other ones. So in Sun Goku Battle 1 and 2, you can pick two skills per stage, which you can swap to by pressing one of the shoulder buttons. And it swaps the input of like triangle. So triangle would be like one move. So it'd be like Kenshin super move where he runs along and he unsheaves and sheaves his sword, does that quick slashing. But then if you press R1 or L1, depending on your configuration, um, it will swap to that uh, like counter attack. So instead of doing that, so, um, so you have the ability to swap moves. So instead of that, you could swap the moves to any of the inputs sort of you wanted and just have like a whole pool of moves that you can pick from instead of like the set ones. So all characters have like a defined move set now, but if you go back to some of the older games, there's a lot of moves that characters had which are no longer utilized. Like Kasuga used to have a counter attack, which he doesn't anymore because it doesn't fit into that input. So instead of that move where you summon this stupid like square thing with the wires, so instead of that attack, you could actually pick the counter attack instead. And I've gone, a such a long-winded way of explaining what I wanted for such a simple, you know, concept. So just like to be able to swap like attacks out for people. Obviously, it wouldn't swap the square string or the strong square attack because they're like defined moves for the character playstyle. So, for example, Magoichi, if you hold square, it charges up the bullet. I wouldn't swap that to like throw grenades or whatever because it'd just be dumb. So obviously keep some of the moves. Um, a lot of the square, hold square inputs are like single attacks as well. So for Masamune, grabbing all the swords and then doing the downward strike, which is like phantom strike or whatever it's called. Um, yeah, obviously keep that, but like triangle, directional triangle, R1, L1 square, L1 triangle, I would swap those. I'd be, give the player the ability to swap those moves out in exchange for other ones. Also, I would give characters an extra super move some of them become kind of redundant or like not usable so I'd be able to like pick ones you actually want so if you if a character has like a buff move um, maybe get rid of that if you like you could choose to not take that if you want a bigger challenge um, and exchange it for an actual good move the other thing is as well um, if you are returning character personalized things like styles or personal inscriptions so like Masamune one of his super moves is uh, War Dance, which obviously brings out all six claws. You could get, if you've got his personal inscription, you could get rid of that 
and um, so you could get rid of that super move and have at three actual super moves instead of the one which like disables it. So it'd be uh, a m or, like a ridiculous glass cannon build because you wouldn't be able to turn off that that ability. So I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, so weapons. Um, as much as I like the weapon system from Sengoku Basra 4 um, for all the options, I would actually change some of it. So I would remove this stat upgrade parts of the weapons. So what you had was you can increase your health, attack, defense, Basra and hero time gauge. I can't even remember what it's called in Sengoku Basra 4, but you could increase all of those stats on each weapon. So if you wanted to pick a new weapon, you'd have to increase the stats first before you actually, you know, could you properly use the weapon and get, get yourself up to speed. I would just get rid of that and have all the stat increases to the character um, and just keep weapons with like upgrades like extra crit damage, elemental damage, stuff like that. Um, buffs to certain attacks so you could increase like your Basra strength, your hero time strength and stuff like that. Um, all like offensive abilities would go on your weapon. Um, I would also return like item systems so you could equip items which would be like the actual stat increases so more health, more attack, more defense, stuff like that. Um, yeah I'd also in like or what you could do is you could make armor come back again so it's a feature that was in Sengoku Basra 2 and 2 heroes that each character had three different pieces of armor which was like an actual accessory that would go on the character model. So for example, Kasuga gets like scarves, uh, nose for some reason changes the color of her dress which made a lot of her alternate uniforms pretty like redundant which is kind of weird. Um, so I'd, so you could either have like all offensive abilities attached to weapons, defensive abilities attached to the armor. I'd also make armor like toggleable if they're like visible. So, so for example, no. Um, if you equipped her armor, as it were, it would change her dress to blue, but her alternate new outfit that was added in uh, Two Heroes um, is literally just like a reskin or recolor of her normal armor, which if you were wearing the armor piece, it made both of those costumes look exactly the same, so it's like really stupid. So I'd, I'd make it toggleable if it's like visible or not. So it'd be basically like wearing an extra costume or not. So um, it gives people the option to actually like not wear the armor without actually taking it off and giving yourself a disadvantage. So there we go. Um, yeah, so offensive abilities on weapons or defensive abilities and recovery on like armor and stuff like that. I think that'd be a better system because having to upgrade your weapon each time you want to use it was kind of dumb. It's like that's why one of the reasons why I don't like the style system in Yuki Muraden because it just every time you wanted to try a different style, you'd have to upgrade the weapon so you could actually fucking use it. So I generally dislike that. So um, story and stages now. Um, they have always done character focused stories a lot better than Koei games. Um, I would probably. As much as I like Sengo Kabasa 4 story mode and 3, it does get incredibly repetitive going through each of the stages and uh, each of the character stories and it's the same pool of stages over and over again. It kind of gets incredibly repetitive. So what I would do is just remove all the fluff and have set stages for characters and their stories. Obviously you could have like branching paths still if the character d makes this choice or that choice. Obviously give them like the drama route, the anime route, and the normal route. Um, so it'd build on like the characters. Obviously it's not, not um, like character stories in this game have been better because it's just been like comical in some situations or like p proper actual character growth instead of like Dynasty Warriors and stuff which have just been like, my lord is dead now, character growth. Absolute wank, okay? So I'll just get rid of all the fluff and get rid of the repetitive stages and have set stages for the characters. You can then tailor them to the way the character plays. Like character stories in two heroes are actually really good because some of the stages you never actually play in like the alternate modes. You can pick them as like free mode stages, but like some of Kataro's stages in that mode, um, he's actually allied with like Sasuke and Kasuga for the first two. And you're on like assassination missions, so you kill Hanbei and then you kill 
uh, Hideyoshi, I think, is the next one. And then, like, the last stage is against those two. So it's not, like, a stage you could actually pick. Um, or, it's, or it's stages that are going to appear in, like, the Heroes Chronicle mode. But it's just, like, st stages which are tailored to him and his story. So I think that'd be quite a, quite a cool way of... Uh, Doing things. Leave like the randomized stage thing for like a different mode. So you could have the Hero's Conquest where you know they're riding on the horseback and then it's got a pool of stages that you pick. And then obviously other warlords in the uh in that game mode are fighting each other and then eventually it's like Yeah. So it's like the conquest mode, except it's got like the story mode from uh Sengo Kabastra 4 where you're riding around and, and the stages are more randomized, so you're not having to pick, you know. Uh, you're not having to pick the adjacent provinces because I think that was one of the things that made the mode so sort of like tedious that if you picked a certain character you were limit you always had the same three stages to pick from from the, from the beginning you always limited to, to, from where you like started as it were which is kind of kind of annoying so um, yeah and also having the Sorry, just going back to the story mode. Having the personalized story stages actually gives a reason to play free mode. Um, then you have, with the personalized stages, you can then pick them as like a different character. You know, for funsies, if you've got like favorite stages. Whereas like free mode in Basara 4 was kind of like redundant because most of the stages you were the same for every character. So just doing story mode, you'd eventually get to a stage you wanted. So yeah um like additional modes as well i don't even know what i'd want to do just have like the hero's conquest thing but have it like better so you so you're not having to pick the people next to you to begin with you could have like a challenge mode from three utage which would like defeat x amount of uh characters with this attack like defeating tadagatsu when he's powered up with all of his modes at once uh, defeating characters with their personalized ins with their personal inscription enabled stuff like that like challenge mode would be really good you could have like the Sanada trials mode as well so they have lots of options I'm not sure which would be like the best and which people would actually enjoy the most because I think for me Sengoku Basra is like all about the character play styles and just you know the actual combat as the best bit about it so as long as it, they don't make things like tedious to go through, they actually make it like fun and enjoyable. That is like the main thing. So the last thing, and I know I've kind of rushed this video because I've just made bullet points. And to be fair, most of the Sengoku Battle games are like really good. And I wouldn't know how to like massively increase them or come up with like a new mode that would be absolutely amazing. Not that that's going to happen, but um, there's one last thing that, they should do and obviously that is release it in English or actually give it like proper localization I'm not sure if like English dubs would make the games better but some of them in like three uh, samurai heroes are actually amazing like Mitsuhide and or Tenkai it like he is actually just like terrifying in the English dub he's got some like really goofy lines as well the like Surahime in English is like really cool as well um, I think it adds to just like the goofiness of it so maybe give it an English dub or just, you know, release it in Western territories. I know I like to dunk on Koei because, well, quite frankly, they deserve it. But I think you could probably kill Dynasty Warriors and Samurai Warriors or at least give Koei enough of a kicking up the ass to actually, like, improve their games. Because Sengoku Basra is actually leagues ahead of, like, anything Koei does. And I would probably include, like, collaborative games there. And it's not to like just shit on Koei, but it's to like actually improve their games. I've been, I was a fan of their games until they just like kept driving the nail further and further into like the coffin. So Dynasty Warriors, basically dead. Samurai Warriors, they like fucked that up because, oh, let's, it's a reboot, but it's like with no effort. Um, most people, like who the fuck is playing Samurai Warriors 5 at the moment? I didn't even bother to buy it or play it, but I've just seen like, Oh, this is a game we're going to be playing for years and years to come. And you go on, like, the the game page on YouTube and it's, like, fucking dead. The content for it that people have covered for it is complete wank as well. Um, just, yeah, and Warriors are actually 4 and 
4 Ultimate or whatever they called it. That's just complete shit as well. Just like zero effort into actually like improving the game. They didn't improve the game in like a single regard other than they made a working fucking menu. It's just bizarre. So honestly, um, do that to either kill Koei or just like force them to make better games. And that's the thing that um, about the gaming industry, like if you make better games, it should um, force other companies to make better games as well. I think like Baldur's Gate is really putting people, uh, piling pressure on people to actually like fucking release a working game to begin with. So yeah, um, that's all I wanted to say really, just, you know, the series is probably dead, let's face it, um, but they did release obviously that mobile game and a new version of the anime where they're in school. I still haven't seen it, by the way, but just I, I just want a new Sen Goku Basra game to come out and just try and revive the series. It's not like it's they've been bad games and obviously they know how to sort of like market things. That's why Sen Goku Basra 1 is called Devil Kings in Western Territories because it tried to like ride off the coattails of um, Devil May Cry and stuff like that. So yeah, just it, you have to spend money to make money. Yeah, people would know this, but I, I would like to see the series get a revival. Obviously, don't make any stupid decisions. Don't have stuff like the style system from Yukumo Den. Just yeah, I don't think you can find any games which have like this level of sort of combat for this many characters. Like, there's a surprising amount of depth to like some characters, like. You know, KG, um, Surahime actually has some like weird techniques that you can do with her, like precision timing on each of the shots. Um, Katara Fuma, obviously aerial combos and stuff like that. Just, yeah, just go hog wild. Just release a new game. Come on. So there we go. Um, what changes would you like to see? What characters would you like to see added? Ones returning. Um, what would you change to the combat? What would you change to the item systems? And um, let me know. Thank you very much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.